you very much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are assembled again in the name of thy beloved child, the Lord Jesus, to express our love and worship to him again. We pray that his spirit will meet with us and that he will give us each a portion of that spirit that might give us sustaining grace to finish the journey and fight the fight that's set before us, the fight of faith. Grant it, Father, and break to us this afternoon the bread of life to strengthen us. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. May we hear that this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Commenting Brother Carlson, he just let me on about 10 minutes late. It's getting better. Another week's meeting would just, I'd probably be here on time. <laughs> We're so happy for the privilege. Now, tonight is our closing night of this certain service. And I want to let you out in time so you can have your, your supper. I know a lot of you call it your dinner, but if I have dinner, then where's my supper coming? Now, I was talking to a fellow, he said, oh, Brother Branham, it's, it's dinner. <laughs> what well, it is. I said, I want to prove you you're wrong. I said, we don't take the Lord's dinner, we take his supper. <laughs> so we, um, we like to think of it as, the Lord, as our supper, or the Lord's supper, that night. Not morning or afternoon. He, he took it in the evening. It was his supper. Now, so we want to get back early. And so we won't be late tonight. Brother Carlson will go let me on just exactly on time. <laughs> Faith is the substance of things hoped for. <laughs> and um, I don't know if the Lord willing, I might try to speak tonight if I get a little enough time on the countdown. The, for the, it's a scientific little message the Lord's given me for the last days. And maybe the Lord willing, I might be able to speak on that tonight. Now, we had a grand time last night. I went over and said, we're not going to pray for the sick. And the Lord healed the sick anyhow. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we can say something, but the Lord can just upset that anytime he wants to. You see, he, he's God. Now, I want to read quickly from the scriptures. For a little text that I, I thought that might be a help to us this afternoon. And now, if he let me on on time, I won't try to get out on time. And that would be about 4.30, which would be about 50 minutes from now. Let us turn now over to the book of Judges, the 16th chapter. And let's read um, the um, 27th and 28th verses as we look to the word. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about three thousand men and women. The whole while Samson made sport. And Samson called to the Lord and said, O Lord, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me. I pray thee, only this once, O Lord, that I might be avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Let's pray again. Lord Jesus, take this little text, water the church with it, Lord. We pray and commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. There must have been about 3,000 Philistines uh, looking down from the top of the galley of this great arena when the couple entered the arena that afternoon. Must have been a hot day. All day long they'd been out there. And in this great company on top of this uh, great arena that was built something on the order of a upside down mushroom 
and the center post in the middle that went out something in this way and helped the two posts holding all the spectators around. Highly polished warlords and their fine jeweled women all lean forward at this certain event. For they wanted to get a good look at what was taking place. There had been preliminaries, all the entertainment. They probably had little monkeys that had played little tricks. And they had uh, uh, different things that they entertained themselves with fighting, wrestling, and, and, and maybe dueling to death, and many other things that that they had been entertained with all day. For it was a great day. But now the main event come. You know how we all wait patiently while the preliminaries are going on. And they wait for the, the main event. And that's when everybody sets up and takes notice. We watch it in our religious services. When we have our, our singing and our testimonials and the preaching and so forth, but the main event is see what the Lord's going to do. See what he's gathered us together for. We're all under anticipations to see just what the end's going to be, the main event. It's that way in anything. We always watch for the main event. And they all raised up to look forward to see what was taking place because the main event was being brought to them. What did they see but a blind man being led by a little boy? The halls that echoed all afternoon with drunken reverie. How that they passed the whiskey and their high drinks and their fine painted up and jeweled women and great dignified warlords and all. It was a great celebration. They were celebrating the victory. Oh, how I hate to say this. The victory that the fish god Dagon had got over the servant of God. It just goes plumb down to bottom me to have to say that. But it's truth. Celebrating such a way as that of victory over Jehovah's servant. What a shameful thing. Drinking, revering, painted women and jeweled up, great dignitaries. The fires is burning under the fish god and what a celebration it must have been. But the heartbreaking part as thousands of years later that we have to think back of such an event as that. And when the great God of heaven, who had purposed in his heart to destroy that nation because they were heathens, and it sent a man to do the job, and here the fish god idol was celebrating a victory over Jehovah's uh, servant. Jehovah never lost. The servant that he sent to do it lost the victory. What a sight. What a shameful thing it was. The lad led the stumbling blind man across the, the hall to these big center posts were on all the great upside down mushroom or umbrella like set where the people look down like this when the great like pilasters run up and help the thing in order laid by stone that could not be reproduced again today no one could build it like that but what a great thing it was and thousands of the celebrity priests who had served an idol with their chest all swelled out and all their ceremonies and rituals over their idol that he had 
conquered Jehovah. What a great day it was. Drinking, reverie, and carrying on. And here comes Jehovah's servant. Blind, stumbling, led by a little boy out to this great post to make sport. The main event of entertainment was to make sport out of Jehovah's ordained purpose to destroy the nation, and yet the nation has taken the thing that God had placed in to destroy them, and now they had conquered him and was making sport out of him, their main event at their celebration. Doesn't that just kill you nearly to have to look at that? To think what could this story never really should have never had to be told. But it was probably told for for our admonition. Is wrote that way. Humiliated, broken, standing now, defeated, right between the two posts that helped the building. What a symbol that is of the church of this day. What a symbol it is of a fallen race of people that has sold out to the world and the very thing that we're here to conquer. The church that has sold its, its morals that sold the Bible, sold its strength, sold, surrendered its sword, and standing humiliated in the hour when the approaching signs of the coming of Jesus Christ is at hand, when she ought to be washed, not a spot or a wrinkle, standing to receive her bridegroom. What a picture we see here. A symbol of moral decay that rests upon the nation, this nation. And I'm not going to try to stay with my scriptures too long so I can get through quick, but I could symbolize that with the church with the nation, with politics, and with everything you can put your hands on today besides God's Bible. Morally decayed, the human race itself, just in a terrible condition. And there under atheists and unbelievers that can point their finger into the face of the church who should have the message for today and ask them, what does all this mean? And they don't have the answer. They don't have the answer. Why? They did like Samson did. They have surrendered. So see him standing there and we'd say, so this is Samson. Let's catch a picture of it. This great, mighty warrior. Let's picture him this afternoon that he had wide shoulders, great framework. And here this big book of a man stands there, blinded, tied with little strings and led to the middle of the floor, humiliated, broken, defeated, with the great God of heaven looking down upon him. Down here is critics, drunken soldiers looking down. I'd imagine as he stood there, many Philistines that even shook in their shoes to hear his name. Samson was a mighty name one time. So was Christianity. The church was. And I'm going to parallel it with the church, this scene. Samson, 
name. People just fainted. For he was some sort of a man that they'd never seen a man like him. His strength was beyond anything that it, the world had ever had. There's nothing the head could match it. Many remembered him as he looked on him standing there in that condition. Many looked upon him from the galleys and remember seeing him standing in another position. One day standing with the jawbone of a mule in his hand with a thousand Philistines laying around him when they had fled to the rocks for safety, standing motioning his fingers, come on if you want some of it. But now look at him. Many of the Philistines, that one night he was persuaded in by a harlot. And in the, the city of Gaza, they took the great big gates that would have weighed tons and fenced him in and caught him and sent out to the soldiers and said, Now we've caught him. We've hemmed him in. Like the devil's always trying to do. Hem you in on something. But remember, when Samson awoke the next morning, or that night rather, seeing he was hemmed in, he could feel back on the back of his head and still know he was a covenant son of God. Amen. And there was nothing could hem him in. The church once stood like that too. What did he do? He rose up. Walk down the street, pull the gates out of its sockets and put it up on his shoulders and walked up the top of the hill and sat down. Many standing there that afternoon remember that event. But look at him now, blinded, mocked, just a sport for the enemy. All of his powers that he once had for his protection. For God's achievement that he had been born in the world to do had been stripped from him by a woman. I think that same thing could be applied today. That a woman who pretends to be the bride of Christ uh, and basing her teaching with a cup of the filthiness of her abominations of her fornications. She has tipped a cup of her fornications into the mouths of God's church that's been raised up to show his signs and wonders as Jesus' last commandment was to do in Mark 16. And now we find that she has tucked God's little faithful group and organized them together just exactly the way she did herself and got them standing stripped denying the power thereof denying the Holy Spirit denying the power to speak with tongues denying the power of, of the Holy Spirit to raise the dead and heal the sick and cast out devils and now the Philistines is up on thee. And what you going to do now? Strip. Oh, what must have went through that man's mind? We have seen what must have went through the Philistines' mind. They had known him. When I've heard one reach over to another, maybe say, I remember the time when you say Samson and every Philistine to go like rats to a hole. I've heard the time you say a thousand men would be marching across the desert. They say Samson's coming. They'd drop their arms and run for safety as hard as they could. But now look at him. He's in a terrible condition, bound, all because he compromised to a woman. That's what done it. She stripped him of his power. She kept trying to find out 
where his strength laid. She knew he was a big man, but they had big man too. But this Delilah, she was a a real Jezebel. She knew how to work on him, to woo him to her, and say that he she loved him. But all the time she was trying to fish along where his strength laid. That's the same thing that the Jezebel has done to the church. It's fished along until it's found out where the strength laid, and it, the strength is in the Word. The Word is God. And finally, she found where that strength laid, and she took him down to Nicaea, Rome, and shaved off his locks. And now they've took what's left the, out of it and taken them back to the World Council of Churches and got their locks shaved again. Amen. It's a constant shaving. Taking this out, and this doesn't mean that in the days of miracles just passed, there is no such a thing as this, that, the other day. They found where the strength lay. Substituting baptisms and handshakes and all these other things for the true unadulterated word of God. This word is God that was given to His church to defeat the world and the devils and the sickness and the cast out devils. And no denomination was given to the church. The word was given to the church. That's her strength. But they cut this away. They cut that away, and they shaved off this lock and shaved off that lock until she stands sure in today, like a Catholic sister, sure enough, until she's accepted a bunch of man-made creeds for her doctrine, just exactly what the prophet said she would do. And here she stands today, humiliated. When the God of heaven has chose the ignorant fishermen and so forth and has come down in that and proving it that he still remains God. And they can't give an answer to their congregation for it because it's not connected with any denomination. And she stands humiliated where she ought to have been standing in her strength. If the church today stood like it did on the day of Pentecost, if the church today stood like it did in the days of Irenaeus and in the days of St. Martin or in the days of Polycar, where the church would march right into death before it would defy any word of God. Irenaeus, Martin, all those men held tight to that water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Every one of them held tight to that baptism of the Holy Ghost, the prophets, signs, and wonders, and they've got away from it today. What happened? Delilah knew where the strength lay, and if she could ever get those seminaries away from that word onto some man-made theology, she had it. Then it was easy to bind and lead them into the World Council of Churches, this economical council. You see, you ain't got no right. I'm still American citizen. I got a right to freedom of speech. That's right. Certainly is. Notice, that's exactly the truth. Oh, how he must have felt what went through that man's mind as he stood there blind. Now, Jezebel knew, or not Jezebel, but Delilah knew if she could ever punch his eyes out, that was it. And that's exactly what Delilah of this last day has done to the church, punch its eyes out to God's promise, and sold you some great big intellectual denomination. Everybody likes to buy, say, I belong to the first church, I belong to down here. Uh, see, as long as the devil can put your eyes out to the Word of God. And the promise of God, no matter how foolish it sounds, it's God's promise. I'm not endorsing cults. Not at all. 
But them cults are known by their works. So is God's church known by its works. But I'm trying to say what Delilah has done to Samson. Now let's take Samson's side. What must have went through the man's mind as he stood there? All the great victories he had once had must have passed through his mind. The event's on now. The entertainment for the afternoon is fixing to start. The ones that's to be entertained are thinking of what he was, and here he is standing here uh, thinking of what he was. But because some woman lured him, the picture's changed to what it should have been. God raised Samson up to destroy that nation. That was the very purpose of bringing him on. If God can only find one man, that's all he needs. One man that can fully surrender to him. He don't take an army. He never did use that. He only uses a man. Now, Samson gave God his strength to use, but he didn't give God his heart. He gave his heart to Delilah and gave his strength to God. But you've got to surrender soul, body, spirit, strength, everything you are to the will of God. Become a prisoner to him. You're going to be somebody's prisoner. You don't belong to yourself. You're somebody's prisoner. You're either a prisoner of the devil, knowing this truth and won't surrender to it, or a prisoner to, to the world and surrender to God, one or the other. You're either the devil's prisoner to sin, or you're God's prisoner to righteousness. You're one or the other. And now, Samson thinks of the great victories that he had won. No doubt, it come to his mind uh, how that when he was a little boy, that God had vindicated him, told his mother that how that she must uh, uh, do, not drink strong drinks or, or watch her diet, that she was bringing forth a Nazarite. How she uh, combed his hair and told him, son, through these locks, it's a covenant with God that your strength will lay in there. Don't never give it away. Don't never give away your secret. Don't never surrender it. Whatever you do, stay with it. Jesus Christ told the church that heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And whosoever shall take one word from it or add one word to it, his part will be taken out of the book of life. The church ought to think of that now. As we stand in this chaos. And this hour, just prayer prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus at any moment for a rapture. The great victories that we can point back in the days gone by in the Reformation. Back in the days of Irenaeus and St. Martin, Patrick, and those who protested those organizations. And when Luther came out and protested that first organization, Catholic Church, and the group that followed him come right back and organized behind him. When John Wesley come out of Anglicanism, and as soon as Wesley left, they organized right behind him. And the early Pentecost come out of the denominations. That was a cursed word to you. But as a dog goes to its vomit, and a sow to their walla. You went right back in the thing that you were born to defeat. Yes. Hallelujah. That hurts my heart too. Even more than to think of the victory yonder that Dagon had over Samson. I see what Jezebel's got over the church. That's the reason every strength and every fiber not being. I'm trying to protest that thing and call back that church to her place of repentance. Your mothers, your fathers were ousted out of those organizations. They come out of it 
and protested it. And here their children has turned right back around and went right back in the thing that they come out of. That ain't a picture of Samson. What Delilah did. How we ought to let the thoughts go through our mind of the great victories. I don't have time to get it and keep my word to you. And of God that raised him up for this purpose. And there he stands between those two posts. Blinded, defeated, humiliated. He was still the same big bulk that he ever was. But his strength was gone. The church is anything, it's stronger in membership than it ever was. But where is the word, the strength being manifested? It's been cut off from you by your power shaving organizations. He had failed God. Not only had he failed God, but he failed his own people. He was a total failure. Now he was a prisoner to the very nation that God raised him up to destroy. And here stands the last organization of the church Pentecost this afternoon, just as defeated as Samson was. You might not believe that, but if you just open your mind to the word, you'll see it's the truth. Had him doing tricks for entertainment. How sometime I said not long ago, these full gospel businessmen, as well as I love them, then their magazine writing up, Holy Reverend Father So and So. You poor, deluded, blind Pentecostals, what's the matter with you? Don't you know our Savior said, don't call no man on this earth, Father? Don't you realize the devil's only taking somebody who's been kicked out of one of those there out here and just making a laughing stock out of you? They're not coming in. Don't you let anybody tell you they are. What's the matter with this deluded church? The world has punctured its eyes. Don't you know Jesus said that that would happen? And when the sleeping virgin come in to buy oil, she never got it. There's the sleeping virgin. Lutheran, Methodist, Presbyterian, they're not getting it. They might speak with tongues and jump, but that don't mean anything. I've seen heathens do the same thing and devil worshipers speak in tongues and jump and sing and shout. Drink blood out of a human skull and call on the devil and speak in tongues. But you rely on sensations. It's the word of God that don't pass. There she is, defeated. Just as much as Samson was defeated. Doing tricks now. How Satan stand up and laugh at and said, Look, they claim they believe the Bible. Look. Telling all the angels of heaven, Look. Look, they, 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 they're, they're Bible believers. Each one of them look at them all colored together. I'm going to throw them every one over just exactly. Go to lead them right in just exactly what the scripture said. They have to do that. There they are, defeated. Delilah, eyes punctured. So they can't see the truth. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you got eyes and you can't see. You got ears and you can't hear. Why? I said, because Isaiah said so. He referred back to the word, the prophet. The God himself, Jesus Christ, referred back to the word of his prophet. And today the Holy Spirit is bringing your memory back. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Women painted faces, wearing shorts, acting like the world, bobbing their hair and doing so forth, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof for your own works prove that you don't believe. The Holy Spirit in the Word pointing right back to the Word again. Oh, you say, I got it. When you take medicine for a disease, if it don't show up, you better change your medicine. 
you're dying your sins. The nation, the very purpose, the very thing that they was raised up to destroy, Samson, is now a victim. And so is the church. Raised up to put denominationalism and the world in the denomination to shame. And you come right into the denomination and by doing that, you can't follow the scriptures. Every one of them's got a different idea. So you lost your strength. That blinding devil. Let a lure of a woman take him from the, the word of God. Now you say, Brother Brandon, it was, it was the word of God. Delilah took Samson from the word of promise. And so has the Jezebel of this day taken the church, lured it from the word of the promise, God, Holy Bible. Same thing. Same exactly thing. What did they do? Let Jezebel spoke of in Revelations, the 17th, Revelation 17th chapter. The Catholic Church is represented there. And they tell you it's them too. They don't, their own book says so. They make no bones of it. How many ever read their own writing and know that that's true? They say the Catholic Church is represented. That's right. And you remember, she was the mother of harlots. She was a whore. And a mother of harlots. See, it had to be churches, not boys. It was girls. Protestant churches. A mother of harlots. As soon as they organized, they'd done the same thing they did there. They stripped themselves from the word and have to follow the dictations of some organization. I know this is not popular, but it's the truth. I haven't got no big radio programs and television programs to support. God help me to never have. I only want one thing, and that's the support of Jesus Christ by His Word. Let Him vindicate that I'm telling Him the truth. By His Word. Not some bogus, make-believe, un- uh, scruple thing but the genuine Holy Spirit himself who takes the promise of this day and shows it is the truth Amen. that's all I long to see like Jesus said if I don't do the works of my father then don't believe me Amen. now blind or oh, you say we're not blind you are blind the Bible said you was every scripture reader knows that this is the lady I'll see a church age. How many believe that? Amen. Then the Bible said that the lady I'll see a church was blind, naked, and didn't know it. There's the bad part. She don't even know it. She's worse than all the other church ages put together. The ox knows his master's crib or stall. And the mule knows his crib. And he said, my people don't know. Blind, spiritually blind. Blind to what? God's word. Just as blind as they can be. And they don't want to see it. And you tell them this. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm intended to do that. But none of them does it. They can't do it and maintain their fellowship in an organization. They'll kick them right out of it. There she stands. Delilah shaved off his locks. Now oh, he's, he's bobbed haired <laughs> like the women in it. <laughs> Same thing. Now, look at them defeated just like they was. Ministers. The Pentecostal messengers of the early days, you would have never made them men believe that their own children would organize seminaries that they criticize by the word of God and come out of. That's right. What by these seminaries have we got? We brought world into the church. An old minister used to sing, we let down the bars 
We compromise with sin. We let down the bars. The sheep got out, but how did the goats get in? You let down the bars. Got away from the word. When Eve let down the bars to intellectual reasonings of Satan, death come in. And the bars that God had her barred in with was his word of promise. And we substituted something else. A creed instead of the word. Amen. You know that's the truth. What have we got, the Pentecostal people today? Too many Rickies. That word. Elvis and Ricky. You never heard of that in other days. It's a word. It's a name for this day. It goes with this. It means something. You say a name means nothing. Then why did he change Abraham's name to Abraham? Why did he change uh, uh, Saul's name to Paul? Simon's name to Peter? Why did he change his own name? Why did he change Jacob to Israel? Not until he wrestled with the Lord. Not until he overcome. And when Jesus overcome death, hell, and the grave, the Bible said he had a new name. And when Jacob overcome, and if the church can overcome, she'll stop saying I'm Methodist, Baptist, and Presbyterian. When she can overcome her creeds, and the world that's drawn her in there, she'll come back to the bride of Jesus Christ, Miss Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 What a sad sight as we see Samson standing there. Women with short hair, wearing shorts, painted faces, and Pentecostals, calling themselves Christians, singing in the choir. I was in a Pentecostal assembly not long ago, a great city where a famous great man lives. And the meetings got so big, I had to take it over to a big place, and they had the selected Pentecostal choir. And little did they know, I was sitting right down behind the curtains praying. And there, every girl in that row, about 35 girls and 35 boys to sing the Messiah, was wearing makeup and bobbed hair. And when David Duplissus was taking up a missionary offering, they were acting like they were Blarn Barney Mayus running along passing the cup. That's Pentecostal grandchildren. That ain't a Pentecostal servant of God with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost won't make fun of his own word. He came and remained the Holy Ghost. But that's where you've got to. Oh. Samson, get to thinking a little bit. (laughs) Remember, these tapes are recorded and sent around the world. I'm just not only speaking to this group here. Samson began to think of his eras. Oh. He began to think of what he was one time. Pentecost, think what you was 1900 years ago. Church, Catholic, Protestant, think what you were 1900 years ago. And look what you are today. Study a little while. Just got about eight more minutes to keep my word. Notice. But while he was standing there, he cried. He began to think of his arrows. And when he began to think of what had happened to him, he was blind. Therefore, he couldn't see no more. He, he's accepted something else. For the love of this woman, that's what got him in and she turned him down. Oh, what a trap I could speak on here that Satan's set for the church. Just get your eyes blinded from the truth and that's what they got you then. And if you only knew it, one of these days God's going to prove it to you what the mark of the beast is. <laughs> Notice, but when once blinded, There she stands. And there he stood. And he began to remember the things of his arrows, where he had left the straight and narrow road, where he got away from God's promise. And he cried out, Lord, revenge my eyes. Why do you do this? He knew there was a possibility. Now is where I want you to listen. 
Samson must have thought of all where he had left the path. He saw it then. It's too late now. He saw it where he had left the path. And he thought there must be a possibility that God would answer. He knew if he could repent and get God to see that he was sorry for his error, there was a possibility that God would still achieve his promise. God will do it. He's going to do it. Say now. God's going to have that church. Don't you worry. She's going to be there. The Holy Spirit will be moving so in the church and the church in Christ will be the same spirit. Luther stood down on the feet in justification. Wesley stood in the heartbeat of love, of sanctification. But this is raised up to the head now. Okay. More than that. She denominated and the husbandmen come along and prune the vine. They died. They never did come back no more. They never will come back no more. But still there's a seed of life there. It's coming on. But notice. Samson thought there must be a, a possibility. He caught the idea. But the sad part is today. The church don't catch that. They don't realize that there is a possibility. Of a revival. They don't realize the possibility. They haven't caught the vision yet. They just said, oh, they say, now, Brother Branham, what are you doing? Oh, I know you clap your hands and have great big gatherings and glittering with whirly tinsel. You have to go to the biggest places. You have to have the most best entertained. You have to do this, that, or the other. Your pastor must be a seminary scholar with a doctor's degree or you can't tell your neighbors down there that your pastor's some little guy out of the cornfield out there that got saved. He's, our pastor is Dr. LLD so-and-so. Mm -hmm. To me, that means it's just that far away from God. That's all, just that far away. Her intellects always takes him away. Oh, you're shining with scholarship. And another thing about a lot of this modern evangelism today, all the way from Pentecost, all the way back, is a bunch of Hollywood showmanship. <laughs> You certainly are glittering with that as the tinsels in the hall of the fish god dagon but that tinsel and scholarship and intellectual showmanship with a great bride let none of the public see any defeat and so forth all that stuff like that intellectual conceptions of the gospel and so forth that don't bring the power of god to make women quit wearing bobbed hair and man to act like to take their place in the house and raise your children like they ought to. It don't bring the Spirit of God. Samson stood there just as big a book as he ever was. And the church stands stronger in members than it did 40 years ago. But where is the Spirit of God? Oh, God. Where is the Spirit of God in it? I see the Spirit of Hollywood. I see the spirit of the world. I see the spirit of glamour. Go right through. I've been 15 years preaching against it. And it's just worse than all of them. I can see it. And I can see the spirit there. But where is the spirit of God? That can grasp God. That can recognize the word itself when it's made manifest. Can recognize truth. Only the spirit of God can do that. That's right. You can take glitter, polish, showmanship. Samson had just as big a body as he ever had, but his strength was taken from him. The church, Pentecost today, stands, I believe three years ago, the Sunday visitor of the Catholic Church said that the, they had a million conversions to Catholicism in one year, but the Pentecostal church had one million five hundred thousand. More than that. Well, what have you got when you got it? I'd rather have five that can surrender their life to Christ. He can do more with five men or one man surrendered than he could with 40 million outside. What does members mean? Just means another thing that you're blinded and adding more strength to the heart. Right. 
Notice, the church today is not willing to pay the price. Samson prayed the right kind of a prayer. Lord, let me die with this enemy. Oh my. There you are. You don't want to die to your pride. You don't want to die to the things of the world. I remember I'm talking to literally thousands around the world when I'm saying this. It's not speaking here in Chicago. I'm speaking to the world. You don't want to die. But the only way that there's a possibility of a revival, you blinded Samson, can't you see that the Delilah has blinded your eyes? And the only way that you'll ever be able to bring back the strength to the church is to die to the enemy that's got you in this worldlyism. Samson said, let me die with the enemy. There's a great price to pay. You must die. To the thing that's brought you in this thing. You must die to the thing that's brought you, you Pentecostal people, to where you are this afternoon. You've got to die to it. Samson was willing to pray the price to get the power of God back in his life again. I wonder if the church is this afternoon willing to pay the price... And die with the enemy, the thing, all your popularity and all your this, that, just to see the power of God back on you again and become a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Oh, I hear somebody say, oh, yes, we, we're having revivals, but it's denomination revivals. The oneness wants to take all the threeness and make them all oneness. The threeness wants to take all the oneness and, and make them threeness. The church of God wants to take the church of God of prophecy. One wants to take the other. Making big denominations. Don't you realize you're only catering to men? We are brethren. There's no denomination can separate the love of God. We are brethren. This will all men know you're my disciples when you have love one for the other. Say, what are you hollering about a man? Love is corrective. If love doesn't correct, then it's not love. You see your child out on the street and don't give him a little bit of posterior protoplasma stimulation. <laughs> You're not a good dad. But a real mother or a dad will turn him up and spank him. Let him know he's got to get out of the street or perish. That's genuine love. But you say, Junior, dear, I don't know you. Maybe you shouldn't be out there at this time of day, the end time, when the cars are going pretty fast. Oh, nonsense, you sissified preacher. Not the audacity to take God's word and call white, white, and black, black. Right, right, and wrong, wrong. But they do it. Yeah, we have revivals, all right. But look at your morals behind these revivals. Don't change them a bit. <laughs> Getting farther from God into the world all the time. Notice, Samson knew what was going to happen if his prayer was answered. But we haven't counted the cost yet. What's going to happen if God answers your prayer to become a real genuine child of God? You know you're gone from your denomination right then. And then women that you play bridge with and everything, oh no, you're gone. That's all. Better count it up first. But Samson said, let me die. He was willing to pay the price. And he knew, listen close now to this remark. He knew that his present backslid condition could never meet the challenge of that hour. Yet he was just as much man as he ever was in his muscles. His frame was as big as it ever was. He was just as big a muscle that ever could raise up on his arm at any time. It's probably larger because he'd been grinding down in the, doing heavier work. We got better churches, better buildings and everything, but where is our strength, spiritually speaking? Oh, we could take a boat in a nation, sure. We could do these things, but that that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the presence of God being recognized among us. That's what we are to live for. He knew that his backslidden condition could not meet the challenge of that hour. And so does the church know it now. 
We can't do it under this condition. You can't do it. Denominations does not vindicate the word, it denies the word. The very denomination itself denies the word as soon as it's denominated. Just the thing itself, you just get on the other side you begin with. It denies the word. All the time, I've just a little minute or two longer, but notice, as I hurry now to keep my word, all the times while they were all standing there and these thoughts are going through their mind, I hope it sends some to yours. They never noticed while Samson, his thoughts went through his mind, maybe they passed the bottle and took a drink again. The fine Hollywood women stood there with their cigarette in their mouth, or if it was such a thing in that day, I don't think they got quite that low in that day. But pushed up their hair and took another drink and hollered, Hello, Joseph or John, are you up there somewhere? We played cards together last night, it was out of a big party. There's a possibility that God will hear me. There's a possibility. And while he thought, the Philistines had not noticed him. While this little boy had untied his hands, walked back, he said, lay my hands upon the post. There's a possibility. Oh, my. I wish the church could see that. There is a possibility of a real revival. What did he do? He raised up his sockets. He had no eyes. Towards God. They never noticed the moving of his lips as he was sincerely confessing. We don't need just a little. Uh, Lord, forgive me and Jim, Joe and all of us. Amen. We need a sincere cleaning up from the pulpit to the janitor. They never noticed the tears running down from them sockets. For he once had eyes. They never noticed the moving of his lips. His eyes, briny tears streaming down from the sockets. He wanted God to make his word once more vindicated. To prove, as I say to this Delilah today, or this Samson, rather, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Once more he thought it would happen. Not a new denomination, not a new sectarian, but a vindicated word from you, God. I know you're still God. I'm blind. I've got off the track. I'm not worthy to live. Let me die with this enemy. You raised me up to destroy it. And I failed you, Lord. But there's a possibility you hear me. Once more, Lord. Once more. Dead earnest, he prayed. You know what was coming. Lord, just this once more. Once more, let me see Jesus Christ as he was yesterday. When he prayed that prayer, the tears rolling from his cheeks with deep sincerity of confession. That's what the church needs. Confess your wrong. Don't care what Dr. Jones says or what anybody else says. If you're out of the word of God, confess it that you're wrong. Cry out once more, Lord, once more. Once more, Lord, once more. Avenge my blindness upon these denominations. And give me strength, Lord, to shake this denomination world with your vindication. Give me strength, Lord, once more proven. He knew what was going to happen if his prayer was answered. He knew, dead earnest, crying once more, Lord. And while he was praying and making his honest confession, every fiber in his body began to vibrate. Oh, God, if the body of Jesus Christ could stand as one, and every fiber and every member begin to vibrate with the literal baptism of the Holy Ghost again. Not with new members and shaking hands in some creed. As the strength began to move into those big muscles, every fiber began to twist. He began to feel himself again. And he twisted out. And 
When he did, the big wall fell. All we need to do today is to see these denominational walls fall, is get deeply sincere before God to heal these blinded eyes that's been blinded from the Word of God. That was Samson's greatest victory he ever had because he was willing to confess over every enemy. First, that he was brought up to destroy. Oh, Pentecost, stand at your post this afternoon, your post of the duty of God's Word. Repent and cry out, Lord God, once more. Let me tell you something. You better destroy your enemy before your enemy destroys you. Right. Bring back the old-fashioned prayer meetings. The real godly repentance. The all-night altar service. Oh, Pentecost. Hear me. Leave. Oh, leave this corruption. That Jezebel has worked among you. Leave it. Leave it quickly. And return back to the word of the Lord away from this Hollywood showmanship. Turn with your whole heart back to the word of God. Turn back to the power of the Holy Ghost. You women dress like women. You men act like men. Like sons and daughters of God. Turn, oh, turn from this Jezebel system that's choking you and blinding you. God, help us to have a true repentance. Not half-heartedly you can't do it. I think today at this very moment, when my time is up, we should stand to our feet and cry with our hands in the air, Lord, once more, once more, oh Lord, once more. Let's stand, everybody that's willing to do it, to see a revival that's ready to die to this Hollywood showmanship. Everybody that's ready to die to see the power of God come to Zion and with joy. All these holy mountains that the herd shall destroy. Let's raise our hands and cry once more, Lord. Once more, Lord. Once more, Lord.